I'm Doug Richard, and on September 10th and 11th, I am putting on an event. The event's called In 48 Hours. It's being held at the Maid Festival in Sheffield. And the idea behind In 48 Hours is that if you run a small business today, you can no longer think about your business as being either online or offline. What you have to understand is everybody is online in one way or another. You can be a plumber, a very small local business, you can be home employed, or you can be a scaling microbiology company. I don't really care. Every single part of your business is impacted by the internet. And businesses that succeed in the 21st century are going to take complete advantage of the internet in a thousand different ways. And you need to be able to understand that as a small business even more than a large business. Our promise in 48 hours is that if you come, if you attend, if you participate, Within 48 hours, we'll touch every part of your business and show you how you can profit from understanding the Internet. So if you're not online at all, you're essentially missing your community. Every business ultimately is about being able to, has some unique premise. There's something about your business that sets you apart. It could be something as modest as, I'm closer to you. So it could just be geographical convenience. You could be a dry cleaner who's down the road and have no other merits at all except you're the one nearby. That's fine. That's what sets you apart. But we know a lot about you, don't we? We know that the people in your neighborhood need to know about you and you need to make sure they stop by for you. Every single element of your business can now be exposed on the net. And since more than half of the population spends the majority of their information seeking time on the net, whether it's for a dry cleaner or it's for a big purchase, if you're not there with them, you're invisible. And that invisibility is a problem. Finding where your customers are is actually the largest task of all. But you start with the most direct way, and the thing we start off in, in 48 hours, is teaching the notion of search. The challenge of the web is everyone's on it. And so it's the largest unfiltered, noisy place in the world. And thus you could become incredibly invisible and small. And so the easiest people to find are the people who are already searching for you. So don't worry about the people who are not yet searching for you. Think about somebody out there who's already searching for you or someone like you to solve the kind of problem you solve. And, what you, that's, and that is essentially search. If they're searching, what you want to be thinking about is, am I being found? And so we teach you how to be found, first and foremost, because the people you want to intercept are the ones who are already looking for the product you're selling. Our goal is to actually put you in front of a computer and teach you the tools live so you start down this journey. And this is just as true for a company that's already got a website on the web. You can have a website and still be static and invisible. You can tell me that you've done search engine optimization but the fact of the matter is, if you're small, you'll only optimize so far. You can tell me you've tried PPC, pay-per-click advertising, and it's failed. It probably has. The fact of the matter is, you can do anything wrong. You can do everything like a dilettante, or you can take it very, very seriously and realize that you need to understand how it all works to understand where you play within it and what matters within it. But it doesn't make a difference how small you are. You can grow your business tremendously quickly if you start to get inside how the web works and understand how it works. And this is all very learnable. Anybody can do this. You do not have to be an expert. But if you want to run a business in 2011, then you're going to have to understand how this stuff works. The web has changed in the last few years from being a push and pull system to being a community system, a system of conversations and dialogues. People call this social media. And there's lots of social media out there. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, and there's a gazillion other things going on. And all that they're really describing is the fact is that there's a lot of conversations going on. And conversations are word of mouth. And what you want to do is you want your share of word of mouth. And the most artful thing any small business can ever do is to create the conditions where people talk about you when you're not there in a favorable way because that is a new form of advertising. It's the oldest form and it's the newest form. The big difference is the web amplifies this to a millionth degree. Thus, the importance of social media is the same importance that word of mouth has always had, but now everyone's talking. And so you've got to find a way to be in that conversation. 
But businesses historically have not been in a conversation. They've been in a broadcast. They've said, we want to sell to you. And so they go through a highly formatted architecture of advertising. You can't do that. You actually have to stop being a business and start being an individual again, representing your business and engage in dialogue. And there's an art to that as well. There's an art to choosing what social media you use. There's an art to deciding what to say. There's an art to understanding that, yes, you don't have to spend any money, but you could end up spending all your time to no profit, which is equally unprofitable. So one of the things we're going to do is walk you through how to be ruthless in your use of social media so you don't become another victim of it. Social media actually has an infinite number of ways in which you can express yourself. And we tend to focus on two or three generally, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and such, as sort of the emblematic of social media. I think that there's a couple of issues there. First, very few social media forms are successful in their own right. Second, it's really a matter of where, are where is your community socializing, right? So if your community is 18 to 23-year-old boys and girls, then you should be on Facebook, and you should be part of Facebook. You should be on Facebook individually. You should understand it and internalize it. And you have to understand the architecture of Facebook advertising, which is a huge world unto itself. But the fact of the matter is your world might not be 18 to 23-year-olds. It might be middle-aged women from a lower socioeconomic status. Well, if they buy a lot of used goods, maybe you need to understand how eBay communities work or other sites. Maybe you have to understand that you're part of the folk community, folk arts community, and you want to be over on Etsy. Now, those are distribution channels that have social components to them. You need to understand the conversation, but you also have to be a vendor in the system then. The social media is as much about understanding where do people talk about you and how do you engage in that conversation than it is any specific tool. Exceptions to that are things like Twitter. Twitter is a community of everyone, for everyone, by everyone, therefore it's for no one. And therefore, you have to craft a presence there and create a relationship with other media. Twitter by itself is nothing. It's a signpost. It's a dialogue. In fact, it's a monologue. Um, but in context, tied into other things, it's oddly powerful. So I think that security and risk are quite legitimate issues. But there's an entertaining side to this and there's the real issue. The entertaining side is as soon as you're not talking to someone face to face, you might as well be on the web. I can lie just as effectively, effectively to you on a phone call or in a letter as I can on an email or on the web. The fact of the matter is, as soon as I'm not with you, as soon as you don't know me, you're going to have to trust to proxies to trust me. And that can be a reference, it can be prior business, it can be looking up my financials, from a trusted authority, but all those things can be done by anyone to anyone regardless. Having said that, there is a real issue, and that is the further away you get from another business, if it's in China and you're in London, then yes, how do you know that they're going to do what you want them to do? Well, part of what we teach, number one, is something very practical. I can show you exactly how you can authoritatively know whether that distant business is safe to do business with. I've done it myself, and it doesn't cost much anymore. You can actually forensically know. Once again, the web creates more transparency, not less, but you need to know the tools. So I can actually remove all of the risk more effectively on the web than I can in old-fashioned territory from a guy down the street who I shake your hands with, but I don't really know what's going on behind closed doors. I can get behind his closed doors. I don't care where he is anymore. So let's say that you are the manufacturer of a product here in the UK, and you've been sourcing parts for that product for a very long time in the UK from other UK suppliers, and you're finding that it's becoming increasingly less likely that you can stay competitive because others are buying, making, and building cheaper elsewhere. So the first thing I can do is I can show you how to get a global competition going to produce the parts for you. Second, I can show you ex and the websites and the tools and the tricks and how to write it and how to do it. And once you've got a clear set of vendors who meet your criteria, you may or may not know whether you can trust them yet, but you know that they can do the job. And I can show you how you can prove that as well. I can then show you how to do what's known as forensic accounting, where you can actually hire a firm for an incredibly small amount of money who can actually be in situ and determine authoritatively whether the firm that you're going to buy from is a firm you can trust. And then I can show you how you can set up the financial scheme around it so that the risk is theirs, not yours. 
so that there's no money risks if they fail. But what you want is not that you don't lose money if they fail. You want to know they're honest enough so that you can succeed. And I can show you how to forensically test that ahead of time. Thus removing the risk, increasing the likelihood, and by definition, lowering your cost and increasing your profit. The new world of distribution, what I mean by that is there is a big change going on the web. A lot of people think that the web is about marketing, and it is. But actually, it's even more about having your products already in place where people can buy them. And it used to be that meant you sold them to a third-party distributor who sold them on to someone else. But the web changes that. And a lot of people think, ooh, I'll give you, I'll give you a very prosaic example to start, eBay. People think of eBay as an auction site, but eBay is actually a multi-headed hydra of distribution systems where there are very large companies, multi-billion dollar companies that have set up eBay stores with fixed prices because sometimes people come there and when a few billion people come to something, you should be there. So then the question arises, well, do I have to set up another store, the same store? There's ways in which you can do nothing at all and have it all done for you and it just appears. So essentially, it's a distribution mechanism to feed your products out. The same thing's true of Amazon. The same thing's true of some other things you've probably never heard of that put your product into the world. You might have had the very interesting experience of typing in a search in Google recently and not only gotten websites back, but names of products, lists of products, and prices. I can show you how they got to be a listed named priced product and you didn't. The fact is, the Google itself is turning the entire of the web into a database. You need to plug into that as well. The fact is distribution itself is changing. You can be a very small global company and have global distribution and global fulfillment and global accounting and do so for very little more expertise than you have now being a local company.